Ragman, look at you. Look at you. You look fabulous. What's going on? Look at that compound. Look at that. Look at that beautiful, artistic, well-designed compound you got going on there. You like that? That's great. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's always a question of where are you going to do the interview from? But I, uh, I decided my boyfriend's apartment would be uh, a suitable location. <laughs> you know what? And I'm not surprised because one of my good friends, Maggie Rose, she loves you like so much. And I love it, her too. And now we understand why. Obviously, your vibes are immaculate. It huh. all makes sense. You are too much. I love Maggie too. She's a dear, a dear pal. And I'm, uh, I'm so excited. She'll be at sacred Rose as well. We've kind of been playing Absolutely. festival tag in the best way. And I'm stoked that we get to keep it going. And it's going to be like the apex. I feel, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just going to be incredible. No, without a doubt. It is literally <laughs> the apex of all apexes. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. So obviously Karina Reichman, amazing artist in your own right for my audience, check you out. Wonderful talent you know, best known, you know, for your work uh, with uh, Marco Benedetto's band since 2016. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I first have to start with this, Karine. I mean, Michael Berg, your friend, founder of the festival. And man, he builds this festival. And he, he says, Karina, on Sunday, you know, last day of the festival, you're going to play and listen to this for my audience. I'm not exaggerating. With Krongbin, with Blue the Tiger, with Coyote, Kamasi Washington. Like, is there a part of you, Karina? I know you've played like the biggest stages in the world and you've been doing this for a while. But is there a part of you that even after all this time, you hear that and you get nervous? Like, like a part of you that says, am I, am I gonna, am I gonna fuck this up? Like, like a little bit of nerves, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, Michael Berg, uh, Berg texted me whenever this was and he said, hey, I want you to, you know, I'm putting on this new thing. Uh, in Chicago, we're calling it Sacred Rose. This is my proposed stage. And he ran that whole thing down to me. And I was just like, oh, yeah, that's a stage <laughs> after my own heart. No, it's it's a huge honor. And, uh, you know, for me, some of my favorite artists are on that stage. And I'm friends with Blue. We kind of grew up together here in the city. I'm like four years older than her. Than her but uh, she was definitely, we played music together when like she was, you know, nine and I was 12, you know, yeah. in like the same uh, circle. So it'll be great to see her. I'm, you know, Krungbin let me open for them in 2019 at the Capitol right. Theater and I'm friends with them and I love them so much. They're the glimmering example of, you know, doing yourself to the nth degree and having immeasurable success come from it. And I'm so glad that everybody's on the Krungbin train because the second I heard that music, I was, you know, falling over myself trying to immerse myself in it as much as possible so yeah i mean it's an unbelievable and of course haidas coyote forget it and kamasi forget it let's not it's it's a stage after my own heart uh, you know to the nth degree and i'm so delighted to be a part of it and yeah i am nervous of course i'm nervous i'm like holy shit what the fuck like these are you know <laughs> this isn't you know i like to refer a lot of the festivals i do you know with all due respect it's uh it's uh cold burgers and warm beer festivals you know what i mean this is not uh this is no podunk uh you know thing in the woods this is a real you know some of my favorite artists in the world are on this and i'm so um you know shocked and delighted to be a part of it exactly and you know just on research like this is like your dna this is your soul Karine. i mean you've talked about the influence that the almond brothers had on you for example growing up but like what what is it what, what was it about like this type of music this rock and roll that just like since you were a little girl 
just kind of like set your soul on fire, you know, like why jam bands, why this great stuff, you know, like where did this come from? Oh man. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's so much music that does it for me. And that's, that's, you know, one, one element of my musical DNA for sure, but it's a very strong one. And to me, you know, I talk about it a lot. Improvisational music is so close to my heart and something that excites me so much because both the, it's, it's mainly the freedom, you know, and the whole thing of the audience and the band being in on this sort of ex exploration together, you know, and them giving you the space and time to create something from nothing. And you, yeah. you know, having the desire to let something reveal itself over a longer period of time, you know, right. and that to me is very exciting and just very, you know, a really wild way to go about, you know, making and performing music. And it's, it's, it's an incredibly special one, uh, you know, cause it, it just feels like the audience and the performer are inextricably linked in this really wild way. So that's a big element of it for me. And there's also this element of risk mm. that really keeps me coming back for more. <laughs> even um, you, like, a, you like that a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I love it. And I love the fact that, you know, all these bands that I love who sort of follow in that format, you know, I keep going back for more and I'm always, you know, blown away by just, you know, you step out and when there's an improvisational moment about to happen, you know, you don't know. And like know. Some, some of my favorite bands fall flat on their faces and you're like, ooh, that really didn't reach the heights that I know it could have, you know, whereas right. sometimes it reaches immeasurable heights beyond your wildest conception of music, you know, and just that, that element of, you know, we fuck around and find out is one of the coolest things in music for me. Having said that, I mean, I'm a huge punk rock fan. I'm a huge mm. hip hop fan. I'm a huge fan of things that are distilled and very much, you know, compact two minute long versions of themselves as well. You know, I'm, I'm right. definitely not just a jammer. I, uh, I'm a, a musical chameleon of, uh, of a very extreme variety. And I just love so much music. And uh, that's definitely one of the uh, musical art forms that I love and appreciate, but it's certainly not the only one. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and this lineup is not just jam bands. I mean, obviously, you know, it has our good friends of Moon Taxi. You're going to be there. Obviously, you know, it's St. Paul and the Broken Bones, friends of our show. We, we mentioned Maggie Rose, you like you're like a rocker in your own way. But yeah. Karina, let me ask you about your state, because Every time we looked at you and like your research interviews shows and right now you're always in a great emotional state. And I mean this, like we couldn't find an article or something where you're like grumpy, you know, where you're like just like sleepy. So like, I, and I'm not tooting your horn here. Like that is such a beautiful thing. Just not just for an artist, but like as a, to, to any human, how do you like always stay in such great emotional and physical state during a great question, you know, and I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm so grateful for every moment that I don't wake up, you know, paralyzed, fucked up, you know, I, I really do believe that like any of us are one accident diagnosis, whatever away from a completely fucked up life, you know, mm. and I li live in that sort of gratitude space, not to sound all woo woo about it, but really just for whatever reason, it's just my disposition. I'm so, yeah, my life is so miraculous in so many ways that I'm just like, you know, such an appreciator of every step that I get to take. And especially, you know, the fact is in terms of my musical career, I didn't have any expectation that this would be my life. It was just such a pipe dream. And, you know, I didn't, everything unfurled itself sort of in the most natural, organic and beautiful way. Nothing ever felt forced. I never felt like I've sold my soul. I never felt like I did something that I didn't want to do. I've just kind of marched by the beat of my own drum forever. And, you know, I've picked up some fans and friends along the way with great pleasure. And that's just absolutely shocking to me. And I expect nothing. I have no lofty goals, lofty ambition. Like I'm just like every gig to me is such a huge joy and blessing. And I really mean that. So living in that sort of world where you're just in constant, you know, wonderment at how you fell into this 
thing that you really wanted to fall into, but never, I don't know. It's a really wild thing. And of course I've worked hard as fuck. Let's not get like, <laughs> right, right. I've, I've worked hard as fuck. It's, it, it's, it's a combination of the two, a lot of luck, a lot of work, a lot of being nice and hopefully pleasant to work with, with everybody who, you know, crosses my path. And I'm just really grateful for everything every day. I have a most beautiful life that I don't take for granted for a second. You know? Absolutely. Beautifully said. And, you know, especially great because, you know, a lot of the people that come to the show are our friends, you know, they grew up in musical families and that kind of stuff. But your parents, you know, they were philosophers, right? I mean, John Rackman and Ann Boyman, uh, they're both professors at Columbia. Um, how was that growing up? And, and, and then you kind of like carving your own path into music, uh, Karina, you know? Why, look at you doing some research. I'm so <laughs> impressed. I am wildly impressed. Look at that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, my dad's a philosopher, as you said, and my mom's, uh, I mean, and he's a professor at Columbia and, you know, writes books, writes books, gives lectures, et cetera. And my mom uh, is a professor and, t you know, teaches French mm -hmm. at, uh, at Columbia and all that for the last 40 years. Um, my parents are not typical academics, I would say. My parents are the types of academics who value art, the self, creativity, you know, all of these things. They're, they're not rigid people in the sense of they never, ever had ambitions for me. I only had ambitions for myself or, you know, not even ambitions, just desire. You know what I mean? They were incredibly tuned in to the fact that my desires were my own and they were very intense, you know, like once music became my thing at like age 11 or 12, it was lights right. out, you know, there was, I had blinders on for everything else. Nothing else really mattered. I knew all my friends from music. All I wanted to do was play in bands. All I wanted to do was go and see live music, blah, blah, blah. And my parents, you know, being super heady intellectuals in their own right, you know, I definitely could have gone a different way, but they never once presupposed my destiny for me. You know what I mean? They right. never once kind of projected like, oh, you, you have to get a PhD because we have them. And you know what I mean? Never for a second. I think more than that there. And, you know, if they were here right now, I think they would be, you know, echoing these sentiments. My parents have such a beautiful, tactful relation to the world and me in it. And they're so um, cognizant of what is and not what should be or what could right. be. They're very tuned into the here, the now, the what's real, what's happening. And I'm no exception. You know what I mean? They're just like very much like Karina is Karina. And they gave me the beautiful, most beautiful gift of all, which is to the gift of, of time, space and love to be myself. I love you know? that. I think it, it wasn't it like Kant, Emmanuel Kant, who's like who's like an, an apple is beautiful because it's an apple. So I think I think that's kind of what you're doing, you know, all of that. Well, my dad always, you know, there's a, there's a philosopher named Spinoza. Um, and my dad always tells me I have this Spinozistic joy. Um, which of course, you know, we, we could dive into, but we don't have all day. <laughs> we don't have all, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the meaning the of levels, life here. Yeah, the levels of spin of <laughs> joy uh, we could do on your next podcast. That would be great. Um, yeah. I love it, Karina. You're, you're being so good with your time. And yeah, you're right. I could talk to you for 17 hours. I can already see it. So, 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 so let me ask you about this. Let me kind of like leave you with this, Karina. I mean, let me ask you about social media. Do you enjoy it? And, and, and the reason why I say that, you know, on a deeper level is, you know, it's it's constantly, and, and we talk about this here in Nashville frequently lately, how it's become almost like a chore for many of, of our colleagues, right? And it almost takes away you now from the creative process. Like the energy that you need to create a good TikTok is the same amount of energy that you could use to create a good hook and a good line and a good and a good bridge. Uh, tell me a little bit, like like, do you enjoy social media and like and like, what do you think about all this? These are great questions. And, you know, I have a lot of thoughts on the matter. Namely, I'm, I will be the first to admit the, le like, really, truly the level of addiction that I have to social media is certifiable. I really, it's, it's bad, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, you know, if it's this bad now, I can honestly like see a future where like I give my managers, my passwords to everything and like, you know, tell them to change them on me and don't let me look at this shit. Cause sometimes I really will like just waste hours of my day 
being addicted to this shit. It's really bad for me, honestly. Yeah. It's not it's not pretty and and sometimes I really have to force myself to put that shit down and go for a walk or just clear your head or whatever. And to um, your defense, they're designed for that. Like you know, it's you you're just acknowledging it, but we all are. Yeah. No, it's a real, it's a real thing. I'm not going to, you know, pretend, sit here and pretend like I'm not. And I funk, you know, whatever it's uh, no, it's a real problem for me that like, I have to work on daily, really minimizing. And this isn't even like, you know, do I enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoy it. Like I would enjoy heroin if I tried it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's <laughs> one of my favorite, I, I, I can't stop looking at it. I I'm compelled to check it constantly. To me, the the work element of it, like when I have, you know, new tour dates to post or, you know, promoting festivals or, you know, pimping out the music that I've made or whatever, like that element of it doesn't bother me. I'm not like, oh, my God, I have to make all this content to pimp out my new song or, oh, I have to, you know, post about my tour 12 times. Like that doesn't phase me so much. It's really you know, I feel like we can get into these sort of phases of, of, you know, you get in your own head, oh, this person used to like my stuff all the time, and they just stopped. Did they hide my posts? Am I not cool in their eyes anymore? Do they not like me? Like, stupid shit like that, that like, why am I even wasting my time? It's a it's an idiot box, <laughs> you know, that like a computer in your pocket, that's literally programmed to do this to you. And right. You know, I, I, oh God, it's really, it's an interesting thing. And like, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about like, you know, this is like your, your, your fake world, your online world and your real world is the tangible world. You know, when I shut this laptop and say goodbye, you know, that's my real world. Right. But at what point does the, you know, falsified world supersede the importance of your actual world you know what i mean and how i represent myself on my social media versus the real tangible skin and bones flesh karina you know when that becomes more important than the other which it seems like we're almost towing the line here which is yeah. just a horrible yeah. thought and feeling and and question you know it really it almost I don't know. It's a, it's a scary concept and it definitely, uh, it's one I think about often. I really hope that it doesn't get to that point, you know, but I mean, your, your falsified, uh, digital world is a real thing that, you know, requires upkeep and you have to kind of construe this portrait of yourself, which, you know, I don't think I put on airs on mine, but like, I certainly don't post the, all of the real shit that happens to me. Mm -hmm. I certainly don't post, you know, the hundreds of thousands of hours sweating over a song, some bullshit, the touring. I mean, you know, I, I try to keep it real, but like, you know, people yeah. don't see, you know, the whatever, 18 hours of driving that sometimes it takes to get to the gig and then, you right. know, show up an entire mess and then you have to you know put yourself back together again to be able to perform your set like you know it's, right, a, right. it's a real thing out there so yeah social media in in conclusion i love it i'm addicted to it i need help <laughs> and it, it's it's the way in which we promote ourselves these days in so many different ways and the ways in which we connect with so many people that you wouldn't have crossed paths with otherwise in all parts of the world right like that's an amazing element of it mm -hmm. but it's uh it, it atrophies your brain and it should be used with caution <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable karina karina reichman i mean you've said it all for today super fascinating i mean no wonder that when margaret durante maggie rose told me about you her, her eyes just smirked with joy and now we all understand why what a great guest can't wait to see you perform august 28th sacredrosefest.com Incredible lineup, incredible soul. And yeah, Karina, thank you so much for your time. Ah, such a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Take care. Cheers. Can't wait. <laughs>